Antibiotic medications are used to kill bacteria which can cause infections. They have made a major contribution to human health. Many diseases that have one killed people can now be treated effectively with antibiotics. However, some bacteria have become resistant to commonly used antibiotics. Antibiotic resistant bacteria are bacteria that are not controlled or killed by antibiotics. They are able to survive and even multiply in the presence of an antibiotic. Most infection causing bacteria can become resistant to at least some antibiotics. Sir Alexander Fleming in his Nobel Prize lecture, December 11, 1945, Fleming alerted against the risk of resistant. It's not difficult to make microbes resistant to penicillin in a laboratory by exposing them to concentrations sufficient to kill them, and the same thing has occasionally happened in the bodies. By exposing microbes to non-lethal quantities of drug makes them resistant. Why resistance is a concerning issue? Resistant organisms cause treatment failure, by which increase fatalities, Resistant bacteria can disperse throughout the community, and low-level resistant may go unnoticed, and then upgrade into high-level resistant when a microbe becomes resistant to many or even all antibiotics. This will increase financial pressure on healthcare system, also threaten to revert us back into pre-antibiotic periods. Since the time of time, microorganisms have posed an Infection risks to humans. Infections has a high mortality and morbidity rate prior to the invention of antibiotics. Variant species with the ability to quickly transmit infection were used to cause a large out outbreaks, epidemics, or pandemics. In 1928, Alexander Fleming found the first antibiotics, the magical bullet, the penicillin, for which patients were successfully treated for life from life-threatening infections. This came as a massive relief to the medical professionals. Over the next three decades, a vast range of antimicrobial agents were developed and discovered. From 70s to 80s, the rates of the detection of newer molecules unfortunately slowed. Since then, there has been a discovery blank level, noting the post-antibiotic area. Some medication were effective at a height of antibiotic period are becoming less and less infection effective as a result of organism mutation. Today, health professionals must cure and handle infection with the same or better efficiency by using the same amount of antibiotic resources. Alexander Fleming discovered the first antibiotic, as I mentioned before in the 20s, However, it took like a decade before the penicillin was introduced commercially or to public as a treatment for bacterial infection. Until now, new antibiotics have been developed to replace older, increasing ineffective ones. However, human innovation may no longer outpace bacterial mutation. The pace of antimicrobial mutation is accelerated and keep accelerating. There is a current shortage of new antibiotics, with fewer pharmaceutical companies engaged in the process of developing antibiotics since the 19th. Today, there are very few novel antibiotics under development. At the same time, antibiotic-resistant bacteria that survives antibiotic treatment are becoming more and more common, making the available antibiotics ineffective. Thus, we are inevitably facing a very big or a major health problem. Antibiotic resistance myth or myths because they are two. Antibiotic resistance is caused by antibiotics and antibiotic resistance species are more harmful. The truth is antibiotic resistance is caused by the misuse of the antibiotics, not by the antibiotic themselves. The antibiotic-resistant bacteria are tend to be more virulent since we cannot destroy them or prevent them from growing. The origin of antibiotic resistance is an illustration of natural selection. When bacteria are exposed to an antibiotic, those who are able to survive in its presence stay alive. 
proliferate and spread and sometimes resistance can arise from mutation of the organism itself and then this organism is proliferating and even can spread and share those resistant genes to other bacteria cells even the distantly related bacteria species. Non pathogenic bacteria can pass on antibiotic resistance to pathogenic to non pathogenic and vice versa, who are species that are present in the same environment. The factor affecting the microbial, the antimicrobial resistant or antibiotic resistant, the first are patient related factors. Patient in compliance to recommended treatment like uh, forgetting to take medication or by interrupting their treatment when they begin to feel better or maybe the inability to afford the full course. May also be due to inadequate physician patient interaction. Also self medication is an important problem. The self medication will need to additional use of antibiotics, unnecessary antibiotic use or inadequate doses. Um, this can be related to the availability to pharmacies without prescription. The physicians over prescribing of broad spectrum drugs when narrow spectrum are appropriate, also wrong prescription and guidelines from unskilled practitioners, also the unnecessary prescriptions that are very common in private practitioners for financial advantages. Hospitals. Hmm? Um, some hospital acquired infection or called nosocomial infection with highly resistant bacteria pathogens mainly due to poor infection control practices like hand washing, changing gloves, etc. Poor quality of antibiotics themselves, poor quality compliance in manufacturing. Expired antibiotics also irrational use of antibiotics in animals. Antibiotics are used to growth and disease control in poultry, cattle, etc. are indirectly taking those antibiotics when we are eating those animals. Inadequate surveillance and susceptibility testing and non susceptibility pattern of bacteria isolates encourages empirical selection of broad spectrum antibiotics, which is wrong. So what strategy can be held to contain resistance? The first and the most logical is developing a new antibiotics. However, only like 15 antibiotics are under development now because there's a severe lack of companies that are driven to or have an incentive to develop new antibiotics, which is a big issue. However, the hope is not exhausted yet. Uh, the use of some enzymes that found in human fluids can be used for their antimicrobial activity. The antimicrobial peptides and lipopeptides uh, that target bacterial membranes makes it like, really impossible to develop resistance. Since bacteria to be resistant, they have to change like their whole membrane composition, which is just impossible or let's say difficult. There's also alternative approaches such as phage therapy. Phage therapy is a therapeutic use of lytic bacteriophages, which are a viruses that attack and kill bacteria. Uh, it can be used therapeutically to treat pathogenic bacterial infection. Bacteriophages invade bacterial cells and disrupt bacterial metabolism and causes the bacteria to die. The thera this therapy is very important alternative to antibiotics because the bacteriophages are very specific. They kill only the targeted bacteria, not our tissues, which is a very good thing. The success rate is about 80% to 95% with few gastrointestinal side effects. Also, the Second approach is to containment of drug resistance, managing the varied problem associated with antimicrobial resistance will require a coordinated response that includes 
all participation by individuals, organization, government, in local, national, and even international levels. Also, the creation use of the existing antibiotics. Researchers have failed for like 40 years to come up with any new chemical templates, which is why it's crucial to focus on receiving the current antibiotics while working or trying to work to have a new treatment in the next 10 or let's say 15 years. Yes, new antibiotics are needed urgently, but better we need to, to use the existing agent in a full use and to save them is just as important as having a new one or new ones. Bypassing drug resistance. In order to bypass the problem of drug resistance and lack of new drugs, new drugs, radical new ways to treating infection are being researched. Instead of killing bacteria, those drugs will stop bacteria from mounting an attack or prevent them from forming biofilms or impair their chemical communication with each other without killing them, since killing them became difficult. We need other ways. Important message to doctors and physicians. Decision to use antibiotics and choice of antibiotics to be prescribed are critical in order to treat the conditions such will, such as prevention of resistance. Rational use of antibiotics is demand of our time. It's important to treat the patient as a whole rather, rather than treating the infection itself. The discovery of antibiotic was one of the most influential moments in human history. Unfortunately, society now takes antibiotics for granted. We need to value antibiotics more highly and to recognize that for the foreseeable future. Those drugs are finite and diminishing resources. We need to use them very carefully. For more interesting health tips and information, please visit our website, bydhealthworks.com. You can find links of the website and social media pages at the description box. Thank you.